your insight into this discussion about national security. Joining me now, Chief Staff for the National Security Council and a CIA analyst. Welcome back to the show, Fred Flights. Fred, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. How are you, sir? Good to be here. I'm fine. So uh, this is the narrative. And for all of the folks watching, they understand this, I think, now, after really digging into this election, that narratives and news cycles do happen. The mainstream media lives for it. Politicians live for it. You get a cycle. It's, what, three to four days, and then it goes away. And this week's narrative was the president is risking our national security by not beginning the transition. Is that, in fact, true? Well, I mean, in a perfect world, it would be better to have a quick transition and get the incoming president up to speed as fast as possible on intelligence and national security matters. But we don't have an incoming president. We don't know who it's going to be right now. And uh, Joe Biden can't simply bully President Trump to treating him as the president-elect when there are outstanding legal challenges and recounts. That's the way our system works. What I think Biden is trying to do is he's trying to create facts on the ground. So if courts are thinking of overturning this election, it will be even more difficult. And th this is part of that. So it's an information war and campaign, obviously, and I would say a psychological war to use the media, to use all of their talking heads, uh, whether it be Biden, Harris, Pelosi, Clinton, to get out in front of all this and keep saying, Joe's your president, get over it, move forward. Oh, and now, by the way, your security, safety, whatever's at risk because of Trump. So hurry up, do this, do this, just get over it. And so psychologically, you wear down Americans, even the ones that are standing strong going, I want a free and fair election. Let me hear the results first. And if my guy lost, then I'll move on. But until then, I'm not moving but they're just trying to wear those 70-some million Americans down, right, psychologically. That's right. I mean, look at this laughable office of president-elect backdrop that Biden has been speaking in front of. It looks like it was made at Kinko's. It has a very <laughs> bad a facsimile of some type of U.S., Symbol, U.S. government symbol. There's no office of the president-elect. The U.S. government didn't produce that. This is propaganda. It is part of just what you said. It is a narrative to bully the Trump administration to giving up power before a president-elect has been declared. And Biden is not the president-elect because there are ongoing legal challenges, some good ones, as you talked about. These have to be resolved. That is not just Trump's right. It is the right of the 72 million people who voted for Donald Trump. They deserve to know the election was free and fair. Yeah, what really stands out to me, Fred, is the, and I love calling them the lame stream media because that's how I view the big three or four networks and the two or three big cable outlets, which are all controlled by the big three, big four in the first place. Um, it really bothers me that they won't even cover and they continue to push. I was just watching a little bit ago, John King and Jake Tapper and all those guys on CNN literally say, there's no voter fraud. It doesn't exist. The Trump campaign and all of his minions and followers uh, and loyalists are lying to you. Biden won. And I'm going, these are the same guys that wouldn't cover the evidence of Hunter Biden's laptop, which was certified and proven. They wouldn't put Mr. Bubulinski on, a man who was putting his whole life on the line and in jeopardy to say this is what happened with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Uh, they ran stories for almost four years about a Russian conspiracy that didn't happen. Yet when you have hundreds, if not a couple thousand Americans coming forward, signing affidavits and saying voter fraud happened. I saw it. How can NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox News, all of them not put this stuff on the air? Well, it really discredits them because there's always voter fraud. It's just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. And there have been some obvious examples of voter fraud. I saw on the Internet in Pennsylvania, people 170 years old voting in Pennsylvania. You know, they tend to vote Democrat, just by the way, in case you're wondering. Yeah. It's not that there's not voter fraud. Is is there enough to change the election? But when they say there isn't any, they have no credibility to be involved in this debate. Yeah, there's voter fraud. Uh, I was reading something the other day that can be documented all the way back to Nixon's first run, right? There was a big discrepancy in uh, Chicago back then. So you're, you're, you're going back 60, 70 years where we can prove there's voter fraud every four years in these presidential elections. And I will go right with what you said, Fred. Is it enough to turn and swing the outcome? We don't know that yet. 
and that's why we need to have these recounts. And I'll keep saying it, there needs to be audits, not just recounts, correct? They've got to be audited to find where the fraud occurred. That's right. And look, there also are many examples of ballots that are illegal, that were not properly signed, that Democrat uh, election officials allowed to be counted anyway. Look, I'm sure those people submitted the ballots in good faith, but they are illegal ballots. We know this exists. The networks know this exists. They do not want to talk about that. We know that the standards in Pennsylvania were drastically changed, and they were changed by county by county. There's different rules in red counties versus blue counties. That may be the strongest case that President Trump has right now to overturn the result in Pennsylvania, the fact that these ballots were not treated equally, and that cheats the cheats the people of Pennsylvania in this election. You know, Fred, with your background in intelligence uh, and being an analyst for the CIA and National Security Council, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on China coming out, of course, right away and giving a big congratulations to the supposed, alleged Vice President Joe Biden being the president-elect. There were some leaders who have not said a word yet, but a handful of country leaders have, China being one of them. I think that Chinese are terribly relieved because they think Biden won the election. Trump was driving them crazy with the tariffs, with his efforts to go after them on intellectual property theft. They know that Biden is going to deal with the Chinese in a multilateral manner. He's going to drop the tariffs. China will walk all over Joe Biden, just like they walked all over Barack Obama, just like every every, uh, adversary and enemy walked all over the Obama administration. But I think Biden will be much weaker. Ugh. That right there, my friend, is one of the main reasons why we need a Trump presidency for four more years. China has been eating our lunch for the last, what, two decades. And um, I really think that our president was the only thing standing in their way. So I'm weeping right now for the future of our nation. Uh, Fred, Flights, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Let's hope the next time you and I come on, we've got some actual factual results in these battleground states to discuss and maybe we can then not declare because the media doesn't declare we can project a real winner of this 2020 presidential election fred you take care of yourself be safe this weekend all right so when it comes to freedom of speech or the lack thereof these days that conservatives have right online and elsewhere it's no surprise to me that a supreme court justice is now sounding off about all this nonsense And as you can imagine, it ruffled some feathers in D.C. That's right. Last night, Supreme Court Justice Alito gave a speech at a conference for the Federalist Society and discussed how this year has provided Americans with an extreme amount of challenges, including those which have hindered our freedom of speech and stripped millions of Americans of their civil liberties. The pandemic has resulted in previously unimaginable restrictions on individual liberty. Now, notice what I am not saying or even implying. I am not diminishing the severity of the virus's threat to public health. And putting aside what I will say shortly about a few Supreme Court cases, I'm not saying anything about the legality of COVID restrictions, nor am I saying anything about whether any of these restrictions represent good public policy. We have never before seen restrictions as severe extensive and prolonged as those experienced for most of 2020. Think of all the live events that would otherwise be protected by the right to freedom of speech, live speeches, conferences, lectures, meetings. Think of worship services, churches closed on Easter Sunday, synagogues closed for Passover and Yom Kippur. Think about access to the courts or the constitutional right to a speedy trial. Trials in federal courts have virtually disappeared in many places. Who could have imagined that? Now, speaking of the crazy lockdown rules that have been taking place for the past, what, seven, eight months, in certain cities, they do continue. Matter of fact, Democrat Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot told residents in her city to pretty much cancel all of their Thanksgiving Day plans and prepare for a lockdown. Just days after Lightfoot was seen chanting in large crowds with thousands and thousands of Biden supporters. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, 
That actually came out thanks to folks like What American News and other conservative networks, not the mainstream media. So then she had to backtrack. That's right. Because she knew what she had said and her upcoming lockdown was hypocritical. So take a look. Five days later, she tweeted this out. Stay home unless for essential reasons. Stop having guests over, including family members who don't live with you. Avoid non-essential travel. And this is what it said, cancel traditional Thanksgiving plans. So again, it is okay for that mayor to chant with no mask in a crowd of thousands of people that aren't from the same household to support Joe Biden. But now, Madam Mayor, you tell your city of Chicago to stay home when you put this lockdown into effect. And they're supposed to say, okay, I'll just give up my Thanksgiving. I know you see the hypocrisy out there, folks. It is running rampant. It is disgusting. And the media, big tech, and the left all team up every day. I don't, like I said, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is just a movement of folks on the left. They're not on the phone, I don't think, coming together going, let's do this, let's do that. It's just what they believe in, and so they want to push it and stop us conservatives from having a voice in this country, period. And again, it's do as I say, not as I do. And the actions of that mayor prove that once again. All right, when we come back from the break here on Real America, a first-generation American and a proud man of the American dream, congressional candidate for New York's 3rd District, George Santos, is going to join us with more on how he helped stop the blue wave. That's right, he is leading in a district in New York, and he's a Republican. Don't go away.